Tell me about ARC for the River Valley. I know it's been around for a while, but for those who may not know what it is, what do you all do? It has been around for a while. For a nonprofit, it's older than 60 years. It's been around for more than 60 years, which is a long, long time and a lot of successes for a nonprofit. Uh, the ARC serves people with disabilities, and a lot of the things we offer are activities, educational recreational type uh, activities and events and advocacy. Uh, there are special needs among the special needs community and we try to target things like you might not think about a guardianship or power of attorney in most families where you have someone, you, you don't have anybody with disability. If you have someone with a disability, you, there are a lot of legal questions and benefit questions that come into play and, and, and advocacy is a real important mm -hmm. part of what we do. You mentioned activities. What kind of activities are we talking about here? Well, we have a couple of really popular ones, and then some that are, are, are popular, but not as popular, but bowling. In this community, bowling, bowling really matters. The phone's been ringing off the hook all day. I know if we're having bowling tonight. But we bowl, and we bowl with Xbox here in the building at the Ark, and we also bowl at Midland Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not unusual to see like eight or nine lanes of people lined up ready to bowl because bowling is a big deal with our group. Some of the other things they like, they like art. Mm -hmm. At least once a week, we have a movie of the week and they really enjoy the movies and the free popcorn. And, and we don't drink a lot of soda because a lot of our people have some health issues. Mm -hmm. So we don't drink soda. We try to stick with water and things that are a little healthier. But we do have free sodas, so the popcorn and the drinks, and if we have some candy that somebody's donated for our movie on Monday, that's a big deal. This 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 Monday, our movie was Thor, and they enjoyed that. And and it, how far reaching do you go? Not it's just not in Sebastian County. No, we cover we cover the entire River Valley. All right, how so, has so in, into Oklahoma, into Oklahoma, right. into the Salisaw area, and we serve. Some of our bigger events, COVID has kept us from doing our dances and our dances are very popular. We'll have like 400 people our dances. We have just decided to postpone the uh, Valentine's dance, which would have had 400 people into a relatively small space, dancing and laughing and eating. And we just decided right now it's not the time to have that. But we do have scheduled later in the year, a Halloween dance and then a Christmas dance. Yeah, you know, so that was my next question is, is how has COVID played a role in what you're able to do? It has, it has impacted us a lot. Uh, I was just into our social room where you count people and you see where the chairs are and how far apart people are. It's hard to keep people socially distanced in, in our community and in any community, but it is when you go, guys, the numbers are just not good right now. And to keep everybody safe, we need to, we need to do some distancing here. Some families have made the call that for them, their loved one is not going out at this time. And, and I understand that and respect that. We send newsletters, we send information, and we talk to them on the phone often, and they say, you know what, as soon as things look a little bit better, we'll be coming back. And I understand that. But for some of them, because many times people with disabilities have other underlying health conditions, and so sometimes the families just keep them pretty isolated during, during some of the more concerning times. So how do, you, how do clients find you? How do you get them into the building or into the program? Well, we've been here 60 years, so a lot of people within the disability community know about us. Um, but a lot of the caseworkers who through DHS or other agencies, they know that we're here and what we do. Uh, and we're open from 10 until 4, Monday through Friday. And we have things like Xbox bowling, which is a big deal. <laughs> but the Xbox bowling and different games, we have uh, the Wii. We have uh, puzzles. We have traditional board games. We have the basketball goal in indoor and two basketball goals outdoors. Um, we have uh, air hockey and pool. And people find out about us, though, usually from somebody else who has someone with a disability or a caseworker or somebody who's familiar with the ARC. So a lot of our referrals come from within people who are in one way or another associated. I mean, we do stuff on, uh, we're pretty active on Facebook. Uh, and we do reach out to people and we hear from people sometimes who are moving into the community and they want to know what kind of information that we have and what kind of services there are for people with disabilities. I know you rely um, a lot on uh, fundraisers and volunteers and we'll talk about that in just a second. 
Uh, one of the biggest, obviously, is the United Way of Fort Smith area. Where would you be, do you think, without the United Way? Oh, I, I am I am as big of a supporter probably as United Way has, because I have worked for two other agencies who were United Way agencies. Mm -hmm. And what the United Way does is an umbrella and the leadership that they provide in the nonprofit community, the collaboration that they provide, the resources they provide. I mean, for the number of people they have, and you talk about leveraging volunteer hours, Nobody does it better, in my opinion, than the United Way. Um, is, it, they, is it difficult? Do you mention volunteers? Is it difficult to be a volunteer with the ARC? No, no. It depends on where someone's interest is. I mean, one day a lady called and she is retired and she has a service dog. And she said that she was trained as an artist and she wanted to know if we needed somebody to teach our art class. And when she said a service dog, I pictured a huge like German Shepherd, you know, I didn't know if that would be a really good fit in here with our folks. Uh, when she shows up and she's wonderful and she teaches, she's been trained better, not just as an artist, she's been trained in art therapy for people with disabilities, which was a real rare find for us. But when she showed up, she has this little lap dog who is a service dog who's been taught to perform about 10 different tasks for her. Mm -hmm. uh, so it gave the our members an opportunity to not only learn from her and from the art therapy that she's been trained in, but also to see that this adorable little dog is a service dog. So uh, we have different people who call of different skills. Um, somebody may want to come in and call bingo numbers. We're, we're looking for somebody mm -hmm. who can call bingo because our folks, they don't, they, they enjoy each other and sitting around and socializing is great, but we're always looking for activities to stimulate them and make their life better. And if you like yeah. online bowling, it's a perfect, perfect <laughs> chance. <laughs> or if you don't want to go to Midland Bowl and bowl on a Thursday or night. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All yeah. right. What's the what's the best way to find out uh, more information about the ARC? Somebody can call us here at the office. They can go on Facebook because we post a lot of the things we do. Mm -hmm. When we do a neat art project, we usually post several of our members and what they made. Um, music is a big deal here and we have music classes we have karaoke which is another thing that is extremely popular uh i'm not saying our guys are ready for the voice but they are so proud of each other when somebody has the confidence to stand up in front of the whole room full of people and to sing their favorite song and so that's the, you know that's really key to this you're you're really instilling some confidence oh well, we instill a lot of confidence and the relationships they have and the acceptance Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're accepted here. They have their peers are really important to them. Their friendships are really important to hear the acceptance. Um, and, and I've worked with people with disabilities. I've worked for Goodwill Industries for 17 mm -hmm. years before I came here. And here's what I would say. Someone may have an intellectual or developmental disability, but they are smart. Right. And we do science projects and we do art classes and we do learning opportunities because there are so many things that they can and do learn. And just because they're an adult with a disability, they still enjoy learning. Uh, that, so that, that's, that's really important. And they still enjoy life. They do. And their friends matter to them. I mean, consistency matters and their friends really matter. And it's neat when somebody walks in sometime who hasn't been here for a while and it's someone who someone went to school with. Because if you think about it, in their world, as long as they were in the public school system, there were friends who sometimes they were in year after year after year in the same class. And then whenever they finished school, those relationships kind of fizzled in a way. Right. And when they run into those people who they have known for a long, long time, I mean, it's just the happiness that they see of something that they rekindle. So, yeah, I think, I think it's uh, for, for me working with people with disabilities, I, I think it makes not just me, but anybody who volunteers and people who work with people, it makes you a better person. What a great program. Fra Francie Ford is the uh, executive director of ARC for the River Valley. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Thanks.